Welcome to the studio. We're here in Paris at European Utility Week and PowerGen Europe, and I'm here with David Green, and we're talking smart metering. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so what's driving the rollout of smart meters in Europe? I think there's, there's kind of two angles to, to what drives it. There's uh, enforced demand, right. which is typically legislation. Okay. And then you also have the kind of organic demand, which is when a utility actually wants smart metering of their own kind of accord. Um, what's interesting is definitely in Europe today, it's been enforced. It's been legislation driven. Okay. Um, in terms of how that's going, there's been some delays. There's been some fairly high profile delays. For example, SMETS 2 in the UK obviously was, was delayed. Um, actually, we're here in Paris. Let's call out France as, as maybe a good example. The Linky and the Gaspar projects, for example, have gone well there. Right. Um, but again, it's still that enforced demand. Now, that's, that gets the ball rolling. Um, by the end of this year alone, uh, there will be 200 million smart meters installed across uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Wow. Um, and that's across electricity, gas, and water. Um, just next year alone, there's another 43 million will ship, uh, will be added to the network. So things are, things are definitely moving. What I think is interesting is we're coming up to a transition where a lot of that enforced demand starts to fall away because the, the legislation, the, the rollouts come to an end. Okay. What is then the question is, well, when does that organic demand pick up? And that's actually what we're starting to see. And I think that's the big challenge for, for utilities and vendors is how do we make sure that organic demand is then going to drive the next generation of, of smart meter investment? Interesting. So, I mean, what are the benefits then for smart meters? Is it just for the utility or do the, do the consumers have benefits as well? I think that's an interesting question, depending on who you ask, perhaps. Um, clearly, the benefits are, are, are there for utilities because you know, they, it's not just meter to cash. There's all these other ways that they can use the data. Um, there's all the other return on investment that they can provide. The customer angle is, is difficult. I think one of the challenges that people have seen is getting that customer to buy in to have a, a smart meter, particularly right. in a country where it's an opt-in kind of uh, angle. Um, also interesting that we're, we're starting to hear, for example, in the US, some of the, the regulators are actually demanding to see consumer engagement or consumer programs as part of the smart meter rollout. Mm -hmm. um, the benefits are there for consumers. Um, I mean, if you want to go with the scariest angle, we all need to buy in because it's part of the future grid. It's part of how we need to keep the lights on. It's how we need to manage the grid. Um, there's benefits in just purely educating consumers. There's the fact that actually, uh, I've I read estimates that you know a, a, an average consumer can reduce their consumption by 10% wow. just by having a smart meter, just by having it in their thoughts that they're, they're on a smart meter. Yeah. Huh. So there's, there's a pure monetary benefit from that. There's consumer engagement programs, for example, being able to better plan when to put different appliances on to right. disaggregation. Yeah. And again, some of that comes from the meter. The meter is the gateway, if you like, between the utility and the customer. That's right. where the relationship kind of begins and ends. Okay. And actually the benefit of the consumer is the more you engage with that, you can help reduce your costs, but also we all need to engage to be able to, like I said, keep the keep the grad, grid managed in the way that we need to in the future. Yeah, I mean, for someone like me, I think that stuff is super cool. So I, I, you know, I can't wait to have, I don't have a smart meter, but I want that granular look at my energy data. Absolutely. And and there's going to be people like yourself who are very engaged with that. Um, and they will help maybe drive some of the initial change in maybe a consumer bit. behavior. <laughs> maybe a little bit. Um, but also there's going to be people who don't necessarily engage to that extent. Yeah. But they still need to be part of the system. The best benefits of the system are when everybody has the smart meter together. So that's why there's challenges, but there's definitely benefits for consumers as well as the obvious ones for utilities. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about, or about those challenges. What are utilities facing in terms of trying to get these things rolled out? What's stopping Aside them? Aside from getting consumers on board, I think, again, this is one which has maybe changed a little bit in, in the last couple of years. So. For years, it's been about connectivity and how do we add new endpoints to the network, the challenge of rollouts, and I'm not saying that's gone away at okay. all, but for example, there was a long period where a lot of utilities waited to see which connectivity solution won, mm. and then that's the one that they would pick right. and everything would follow. I think people are realizing now that there's more than one. So for example, again, let's take European smart meter shipments. Um, 
it, it depends on the country, it depends on the utility, and it depends on meter type. But generally, I think 80% of all shipments for electricity are PLC. That's kind of where that is in Europe. Um, if you look at the rest for water and gas, it's split roughly 50-50 between RF technologies and mobile read. Hmm. Now, there will be an impact from things like MBIOT in the future, but that's kind of stable right now. Actually, I think the transition is the, the challenge is no longer adding endpoints to the network. It's not in collecting data. The challenge is analyzing data. What do you do with it? How yeah. do you actually generate insight and value from the data that you have? And I think that's, yeah, that's really the heart of the transition. And again, when I said the, the, the move from legislated demand to organic demand, it's the utility saying, well, how, how can we get more from this data? There's signs of them starting to change. I would say Europe is cautious. I mean, utilities are cautious anyway, but Europe is particularly cautious. Um, but even, uh, I think, on our analysis, 14% of all smart meters, uh, electricity meters installed in Europe are involved in some form of managed service head-end software contract. Oh, wow. Actually, that's ramped up relatively quickly. I mean, the, the number is still like 80% in the US right now. But again, you can see that slowly building. And that's people starting to realize that they're not necessarily experts in connectivity. They're not necessarily experts in cloud services and software. But if they work with the experts, they can start to add analytics in time. So I think that's where the challenge is, like I said, monetizing the data. But it's those managed services and particularly analytics applications like outage management. That's where we're starting to see what might drive that organic demand I talked about. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming out to talk to me. Not a problem. All right. And um, please subscribe to our channels to stay up to date in all our energy news.